Hello and welcome back to the Distinct Timepieces YouTube channel. My name is Marco and today I'm very excited to have this watch in hand to show you today the Rolex 124300. It's the Oyster Perpetual 41mm and this dial is absolutely stunning. I love the green on it. It's absolutely beautiful. Let's get straight into the review. The Oyster Perpetual was formally introduced in 1950. The origins of the word Oyster in the name trace back to the Oyster watch from Rolex, a model from 1926. The Oyster was the first timepiece from the brand that promised to be both waterproof and dustproof. It's famed for being Mercedes Glide's companion on her 10 hour swim across the English Channel. The watch remained on her wrist and survived the challenge in perfect working order. That proved to the public that they now had a watch that was both waterproof and dustproof and powered by a mechanical movement. The second part of the Oyster Perpetual name, Perpetual, originates from Rolex's first self-winding movement introduced back in 1931. Abraham Louis Perillet was the first to create a movement of this kind in 1977, but it was cased in a pocket watch, which naturally had its limitations due to its lack of movement. Harwood were the first to come up with self-winding technology for a wristwatch, but Rolex were the ones to get it right. Clearly, the name Oyster Perpetual carries significant weight given its history is derived from some of the most important milestones in the world's most powerful watch brand's history. The name also describes the functions of the watch. It simply tells the time in a waterproof and dustproof case whilst being powered by a self-winding automatic movement. The Oyster Perpetual has seen development since its initial release in 1950. The first mid-size Oyster Perpetual was introduced in 31mm in the 60s. 1964 was the year that the first ladies Oyster Perpetual was introduced. In 86, Rolex started using sapphire crystals on the model. And then in 2014, the watch world was presented with 26, 31, 34 and 36mm Oyster Perpetuals. The following year, a 39mm variant was introduced and then in 2020, the whole Oyster Perpetual range was updated with the 26mm version being replaced with a 28mm and the 39mm was replaced with the 41mm just like my watch here today. The Oyster Perpetual range was one that never really piqued my interest. However, Rolex's 2020 release definitely caught my attention. My wrist is just over 7 inches and I prefer larger watches. All of a sudden, the Oyster Perpetual became an option for me given it was now available in a larger 41mm case. However, the size was not enough for me to want this watch. The main reason I pulled the trigger on this watch was definitely because of the dial colour. As soon as I saw the green, I knew I wanted it as Rolex's shade of green is particularly stunning. It takes 6 layers of uniform lacquer over the brass base plate to achieve this aesthetic. The 2020 range in 41mm included a turquoise blue, candy pink, yellow, coral red, bright blue, silver and bright black dial. The majority of these colours were discontinued less than two years after their initial release and this year at Watches and Wonders we saw the introduction of a new celebration motif dial which features a distinct selection of the vibrant dial colours from 2020 with a turquoise backdrop, making this the latest Oyster Perpetual available. By the way, this isn't the first time Rolex has produced colourful dials on their watches. Stellar dials, named after the manufacturer that used to produce these dials back in the 70s and 80s, are quite popular amongst collectors today. They're very hard to find in good condition because the enamel tends to crack over time. Going back to 2020, when we saw the revamp of the OP range, we were deep into the pandemic. Watch prices on the grey market and popularity for these watches was going through the roof. There was serious speculation about the coloured Oyster Perpetuals and their future value. Patek Philippe had discontinued what was arguably their most popular reference at the time, the 5711. They shocked the public by reintroducing this reference, releasing a collaborative piece with Tiffany & Co. Patek Philippe produced 170 final reference 5711s and it featured an out of the ordinary Tiffany blue dial. The 5711 Tiffany & Co quickly became one of the world's most sought after watches, retailing for $52,635 US dollars but sold in the millions on the grey market. It's safe to say it's a watch reserved for the ultra wealthy and the ultra famous. 
It has been spotted on the wrists of Jay-Z, Tommy Hilfiger and Mark Warburg to name a few. You might be wondering how this is relevant to the Oyster Perpetual. Well, the holy trinity of watch brands Patek, AP and Vacheron have a great influence on the market, so this move from Patek led to price inflation of the turquoise dial Oyster Perpetual on the grey market as it was the most similar model from Rolex's lineup, having a stainless steel brushed case with a Tiffany-esque dial. Following the sale of the Tiffany & Co Nautilus 5711 at Philips New York auction for 6.5 million US dollars, prices of the turquoise dial Oyster Perpetual instantly shot up to over 30,000 pounds, almost six times the retail price of this watch. As already mentioned, the quirky dial colours were only available on the Oyster Perpetual 41 for under two years, adding to the hype culture around these pieces and the scarcity of these specific watches. The green dial is the only dial that's still available in production today. Thankfully for you, if you have a good relationship with your authorised dealer, you still have a chance to get it. My personal prediction is that next year, we'll see the celebration dial and possibly the green dial discontinue to close off or celebrate this range of watches. The other side of me predicts that the green dial may actually remain part of the Oyster Perpetual range for a long time. I think the introduction of the Celebration Motif dial is ingenious from Rolex as it commemorates an iconic revamp of the Oyster Perpetual and a transitional period in the watch industry. It may go down in history as a collectible but we'll have to wait to see if my predictions are correct. Only time will tell. Let's open up this wonderful green Rolex box and talk about what's inside. Here we have it, the 124 300 in all its glory with that money green dial. Did you know that Rolex have their own metal foundry located just outside of Geneva? That's exactly where they produce the oyster steel used to craft the case and the bracelet of this watch. Oyster steel belongs to the 904L steel family, it's highly resistant to corrosion. The monoblock middle case and dome bezel are beautifully finished and are shaped to perfection. The Rolex Oyster bracelet offers supreme comfort and great aesthetics with three-piece solid links. It has a brushed finish throughout with polished edges and is secured with a folding oyster clasp. Yes, I know everything about this watch is oyster, oyster, oyster. Rolex really like to use this word in their terminology and it stems from an oyster's watertight properties. The oyster clasp is spring-loaded to ensure it doesn't open by accident and it's very easy to operate. Inspect it from behind and you'll notice its internals feature a 5mm Easy Link Comfort Extension Link. This mechanism allows you to extend the bracelet without tools, which can be useful when your wrist expands and contracts due to temperature variations. It's decent, but it would have been nice to have a glide lock clasp on this watch for finer adjustability. It took me a couple of trips to my AD to get this watch to fit perfectly, but now I have no complaints and at the end of the day, this is an entry level Rolex and it's not meant to be a hardcore dive watch, so we'll let this pass. I also really like how the Rolex crown is engraved into the glass in place of the typical 3D coronet. Every time I glance down at the tips of the crown, an image instantly enters my mind, transporting me to the sterile Rolex factory as I start to imagine the machining process which took place to achieve this rugged yet perfect result. The watch fits on my wrist like a glove and it's quite versatile since the case is slim, coming in at 12 millimeters. In the absence of crown guards, this watch has a classic aesthetic and the twin lock crown is decorated with Rolex's coronet and a horizontal line. The horizontal line is part of Rolex's code and in this case it just signifies the watch is made from steel. The water resistance is rated to 100 meters or 330 feet, which is probably more than the average human being will ever need. All in all, you're getting the fit, finish and performance of a Rolex. We all know that that is nothing short of excellence. Behind the closed case back lies the heart of this Swiss made watch. The Rolex Caliber 3230, an in-house movement known for its reliability and precision to minus two plus two seconds per day. The movement is protected from magnetic fields with its blue paracrum hairspring and it also features a high performance paraflex shock absorber and chrono energy escapement for improved efficiency. Like most modern Rolex, the movement offers an impressive 70 hour power reserve, meaning you can leave the watch stationary for 70 hours and it will continue running. The dial proudly boasts superlative chronometer officially certified, indicating the watch has been tested using Rolex's unparalleled methodologies and high-tech equipment above and beyond cost requirements. 
Be stringent measures, testing for precision, waterproofness, self-winding and power reserve were first introduced in the 1950s and are ever present today. As I've already mentioned, it's the dial that drew me to this watch. I love looking at it. In the shade, you almost can't tell it's green, but then when the sun catches it, it transforms completely. If you want a light show, take this watch into the dark. The generously loomed double stick markers at 3, 6 and 9 amplify the glowing effect of this dial. Due to the time only complication of this watch, the dial is minimalistic and stick markers are present at all hours except from 12, making it super legible in the dark. It also has less text on it than you would find on a more complicated Rolex, adding to the clean, simple and proportioned aesthetic. This dial truly does create an impact and is a vast improvement over the previous model. Despite being an entry level model from the Rolex brand, if someone sees you wearing this watch in the green dial variant, as with most stainless steel sports models today, they'll know it was probably not your first Rolex from your AD or that you had to pay a premium for it on the retail price from a grey market dealer. This watch carries some status with it. You have to have some sort of purchase history and a decent relationship with your authorised dealer to get this piece at retail price which is €5,700, £5,400 British pounds or US dollars The watch is trading over retail in September 2023 and its market price reached heights of £15,000 not too long ago. Today this watch is still trading over retail and the discontinued quirky dial colours are of course trading for even more than the current production models. The Oyster Perpetual is a popular choice amongst those just starting out in their collections and even amongst big collectors. At the end of the day, this Rolex has a timeless design and is built to serve you for a lifetime if you look after it properly. You can't go wrong with it. The shopping experience for this watch was very pleasant. Back in 2020, shortly after it was released, I put my name down for it with my AD and less than a year later, in 2021, I received the call from my authorised dealer to pick it up. The watch was presented to me in the standard Rolex green box with a 5-year international warranty card, a manual and the superlative chronometer tag. It came with a travel pouch which is always very useful. So, to summarise, here's my take on this watch. The watch itself is amazing, offering superior performance and a balanced, clean aesthetic. I particularly love the double stick markers. I generally love how it looks and I love the historical significance of its name. It does what it needs to well and the saying less is more definitely comes to mind. The coloured dials really give these Oyster Perpetuals some character which is what this model used to lack pre-2020. I think the green dial is the most versatile of the bunch as you can wear it on all occasions whilst it still has character. The black, blue and silver are nice but given the simplicity of the case they render a dull aesthetic. The turquoise, coral red, candy pink and yellow are very out there and in my opinion look amazing and are the perfect watch for big collectors looking to throw it on occasionally when it matches their outfit. Reverting to the green, it's Rolex's signature colour and I think the fact Rolex left it in production longer than the other colours makes a statement. Despite the fact I've owned this watch for over two years now, it's had the least wrist time out of all my watches. Despite its 41mm case, I personally think it's on the small side for my wrist and it has a very reserved and conservative aesthetic. It doesn't give me full satisfaction when it's on my wrist, I tend to prefer a watch with more character. I would go as far as saying that the Oyster Perpetual is a watch for the faint hearted and the green dial doesn't do quite enough to save it. Many may see this watch as a watch for the understated connoisseur with an appreciation for watchmaking, but it's still a Rolex and it's not an easy piece to purchase which means it can't be understated. In my personal opinion, I think the smaller versions of this watch check every box for an elegant lady. I think that women can style this watch beautifully, the choice of dial colours definitely allows them to complement it with their outfits, it's just a classy timepiece for a lady. All in all, if you're a man, the suitability of this watch really depends on your personality and your physical physique and wrist size. I personally can't connect with it fully but I also can't let go of it because of the beautiful green dial. I like to throw it on from time to time. 
At the end of the day, we come back to the principles of natural selection. It's a fight for your wrist and only the fittest survive. Unless you're in Miami, most people wear a watch on one wrist and there's so many watches competing for that space. The Oyster Perpetual is an excellent contestant, but usually it just doesn't make the cut. And that's the thought I want to leave you with to close off this review. Let me know what you think about the Rolex Oyster Perpetual 41 in the comments. I'm very interested to hear your thoughts and I want to hear three things from you guys today. The first is your favourite dial colour from the Oyster Perpetual range. The second thing I want to know is whether you agree with my prediction that the Celebration Motif dial will be discontinued next year. And the third thing I need some advice on is whether I should change the strap on this watch. I've been thinking about putting a green rubber strap on this watch, but I'm still under decided so let me know what I should do in the comments and if any of you have already changed the strap on your Oyster Perpetual make sure you send me a DM on Instagram I do read those messages so I'd love to see photos if you've already done that also I'm very happy to announce the Distinct Timepieces website is now live offering you amazing horology products we're starting out with moon swatch straps which will definitely enhance the style and comfort of your watch so if you have a moon swatch make sure you check it out hopefully i can add some value to your watch collecting journey all the support is greatly appreciated thank you for watching and i'll see you on the next one